What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. This rocket is apparently ready to launch, that's what the steam means. Uh, coming in as well, I don't know if you've noticed, a lot of the rockets are called Name Me. Depending on how the rockets last is unknown, uh, but at any point if you do comment to have a rocket named after you or anything actually I can try and do, but specifically the rockets, I will do so in order of which they are commented. In the meantime, that rocket has gone open, of course. That is a lot of very hot carbon dioxide fuel coming out there that you can see. Not seemingly bothering those, though, because they are good to two, 300 degrees with the iron Atmos suits on. Just to show you, as I said uh, from when I was building it, there is actually only one place that demolished satellite there that allows us to have a, what do you call them, artifact. So although it can hold, I think, five or six, uh, it's only technically going to be off to get one and then come straight back but it's one more than we had to start with right so i do need to think of a solution for the satellite though this one is finished i believe yes yeah area complete so i need to build the concealed one now i think that's what it's called the one in the glass tube where you need to Provide it with oxygen as well. That one has a longer range and will uncover a few more places for us. The pit farm's a bit of a pain in the arse. The, uh, the, the polluted water is just not working. I've put in a pump now that holds it. So as we have the crap water come down, as you can see, it then goes into the, dr the drink. I nearly said drinks and that's disgusting. Into the crops as needed. Any backup then will back up into that liquid tank which holds obviously 99,999 um, so that should solve us moving forward and finally these guys will be able to do their own thing looking inside there there is only four we've lost the original pit there is now only four of one of which is a baby but they are all the cuddle ones now they do lullaby eggs uh, and anybody making me note on that thank you I was aware and of course if they hug a duplicate they then go ape shit on hugging eggs so technically you'd want to move them into the egg room um to hug your eggs and all about the eggs for you to save you duplicates something to do it but i'm not doing that because i'm just ranching them for the sake of it if i'm honest uh, no other reasons i might look at some morphs when we get time uh, but for now i'm not that concerned or bothered about doing that now this liquid tank is almost full again and we've nearly finished on the ground as well so i can start ripping out those and mopping up whatever's left what i want to do is now move it up here but i'm not going to interact with that room because that room is automated anyway so i'm going to build a big room it is going to take a while but i'm going to build a big insulated room right next to it uh, I'm not sure how big. Try and keep it in line with that, of course. And then we're going to move all of them liquids into this room. And then from here, we'll try and link that into the plumbing for the automation that's already been used on the right-hand side there. Once we've emptied this tank, it can be deleted because we're going to get no more liquids from the ground. So we shouldn't need to do anything else with that. Uh, we can then move the pumps and the plumbing over to the one there with the geysers in and have basically four pumps going out of there instead of two. So it'll be two and two, uh, two pumps in each until the left one is finished with and then four pumps in that bottom one. All of which will go over here to be sorted. The old oil storage thing will be hopefully emptied shortly um, by the plastic makers. I might, I might add a few more plastic makers in there actually. And then once that's cleared out, we'll use that for sorting as well, just to get like a whole process in, because the idea is once all the liquids are in the right place, uh, I'll be then bringing in hopefully liquids from other asteroids, and I want them to be just sorted immediately without having to go through any processes or dumping them in random puddles. I want them to go into a system and sorted directly. Another meteor shower causing havoc on everything and causing a lot of things to overheat as well. As you can see there, they'll start breaking pipes, cables, etc. So it is a good idea to have bunkers and silos in the future for any of your more delicate stuff. Uh, I can replace the top of the port there where they come in through that transport tube with a bunker tile to stop that from ever getting damaged. Um, but the stuff that needs line of sight to space 
it's not so simple so that's where you need the actual bunker doors that are very expensive in terms of electricity to run something i'm just learning is that you can actually transfer the geysers from asteroids as long as you've surveyed them so this one on this second asteroid we can just send it over and dump it in our already set up automation so you can analyze that uh survey it then use the move it tool switch over to where you want to move it to and there it is um, and then bring it down here it will bring the neodymium stuff below it so don't forget that uh, you want a gap to allow the liquid to go through but there you go we now have that being produced home as well and that actually is fantastic because having to set up an automation for it to collect the liquid there and then send it here would be awful so i'm really happy with that a little bit overpowered granted um but it's no different to where i've done it in the past where i've just had the teleporting pumps and stuff so it's a similar sort of process but it works the same way and it's better controlled in our home base all the time as well so we have arrived the artifact thing seems a bit boring i don't know it's probably a harsh thing to say but you basically i've just got there and I didn't have to do anything. The artifact is now on board, and now I just need to fly back. Uh, I'd like there to have been a bit of like, I don't know, walking or something where you have to dig to find it or something like that. But never mind. It's not very often I do that. And again, it's for the museum or the alleged museum. Now this guy can't breathe. Uh, is he breathing now? It looks good. It looks good. Happy-ish. That's one of the other shuttles that's down. That is one I'm building that's not currently in use. Going to get that planted up. The same principle across the board with the bedrooms, as you can see there. The toilet is missing, which is why it's not got a bathroom as of yet. We can fit that in there, though. We can't now. We've put that there. But I don't think I realised, and this is what I meant about having too many rockets. Because the blueprint's a bit rubbish. Um, it doesn't let you... When you do the blueprint, it doesn't do the corner things because they're not technically connected to anything, even though they will be. And it doesn't let you put the toilet in for some reason. I'm not sure why, even though you can do. So the blueprints are actually a bit pants. Uh, and I'm probably not going to use them moving forward. I'll just do it manually. Or I'll do it based on like certain art, everything that can be automated and then purposely leave specific things to do manually so that I know that I'm not going to forget. Now we have the food sorted out for the animals and there was two mistakes I'm, I, I made. Um, the main one is them guys right there. The plug slugs, I have had them for no reason. I didn't really need them. The power they provide is not relevant. But guess what they eat? Yes, they eat all. And all of the cobalt that I've been sending over, not knowingly, has just been pumped into here and then eaten by these guys. So that is why I am asking them to be murdered. Because I don't want to waste cobalt on these guys to provide me with what is 400, I believe, power each, three of them. So 1,200 power throughout the night where I'm producing thousands of power already through power plants. So we've tried it. We've got them farmed and ranched on the second asteroid, which is actually doing its job and providing power. The gas ones were just an accident based on the fact that they were well kept. Uh, but they're just collecting the hydrogen and then off-gassing it. So, yeah, I'm going to wipe them out and use their farm in the future for something else. I'm just going through now all of the other animals, making sure that they are eating something that I'd, I'm happy for them to eat. And that they're not accidentally getting food that I don't want them to have. Uh, the stone and diamond hatches are pretty good to go for coal. The standard hatches are, are obviously just eating sedimentary rock into coal as well. Um, and the rest of them don't eat any ores. So we're good there. The pips have got their food. The crab things have got theirs. As do the shine bugs giving me the sun nymphs that are being used to cure things like zombie spores. Wow, that was a long sentence. And of course, quickly jumping over to the second asteroid and setting them to send over 
a load of cobalt again along with polluted dirt because that's what the crabs need and we have a crap ton like 50 tons over here and that's what they need to survive so we'll get the poke shells growing nicely but also now sending over any cobalt will not be wasted on anything other than what i want to use it for nothing will be eating it like it was previously and that does actually make sense because although i sent over 30 tons originally uh, it was odd that i then realized that i'd run out and i'm like i don't understand how because i've not used it and that is why we've been feeding plug slugs uh, so yeah that was my fault uh, luckily we haven't totally run out and we are capable of going to new asteroids now to support us so it's not going to be catastrophic though it is something that you need to watch out for in the future or I do anyway because clearly I'm the one that forgets just to reiterate as well from previous now I'm establishing it likely is the lumber generators which I have taken out but there is still a huge amount of what can be only described as carbon dioxide seven and a half kilos now and it still seems to be rising i've still got no idea what is going off if anybody does know the answer please do let me know if it gets much higher i am actually going to have to rescue them um because it, it, the pressure will build and build and build which will mean that the oxygen that is in the base will be pushed further and further up and eventually they won't be able to breathe anywhere and they'll die I don't know why the pressure is becoming so high in terms of the carbon dioxide only. As far as I'm aware now, there is nothing producing carbon dioxide. Other than the duplicates breathing, which I've already said is nowhere near enough to make that. I mean, seven and a half kilos per tile and all of them thousands of tiles. That's there's some there's something odd going on. Um, if anybody's got any ideas, let me know. I'll keep an eye on it. But if it gets any worse, I am going to bail them out and see if I can probably just open up the base to the atmosphere of space and let it all just vent out uh, and start again when all the gas is vented out. I, obviously, I will stop the oxygen from being pumped over and then I'll just put it back when it gasses out. So now I am just putting in a conveyor line that is for the... You can see that's coming from the farms. Uh, yeah, th this is for the poke shells. So the idea is now we have loads of polluted dirt. 63 tons is that? Uh, and forgive me, it's a lot smaller on my screen than what you're seeing. So hopefully it's a lot clearer for you. But yeah, that's come from the planet, the other asteroid. We're now sending that up here into this receptacle, and then we're going to put some storage vessels in there. And the idea is then they will have more polluted dirt to eat than they would ever need. And I don't have to do anything because it will send get sent automatically through the sorting system down here into that new conveyor rail, which will go into their farm and fill up that chest. Whatever don't fit will wait in the pipe or in these chests down here. And then four chests there are all sealed chests. There where everything is that off gases. Uh, and I'm just hiding them there in the cooling area. For no other reason than I just wanted them somewhere different to be honest. Just because I can I'm going to uh, go around and just wallpaper a few of these rooms. That's not been done with a few random colours that we do have. Uh, like the crafting room is an example just fill in the background there again it doesn't really achieve all that much it looks nicer though and then all that ugly wires behind that really do trigger me i don't know why but it just does and, and annoyingly the base game drywall doesn't actually cover them either it so yeah it's the what the wallpaper is good for to make things look nice when technically there's a spaghetti junction behind there there is a visual bug there with one of the rails and you can see the sand is showing through everything i don't know why that did that but a restart of the game does make it disappear so don't worry if you get that too but yeah, i'll just make sure i uh wallpaper a few more of these rooms to look a bit nicer the teleport room as well because why not and the one above it which is also a teleport room so the one below is the teleport for people that one that i'm doing now is the teleport and receiving to teleport for the goods in both instances there a nice blackish looking and with the oxygen over it it makes it look like a galaxy map to me I, I do like the black there obviously all that yellow is which is tungsten oddly um is 
the like main pathways. I need to get some of that cobalt over actually because that's a blue I don't have and it's a very nice blue. Still waiting for a lot of the rails to be built. Again, this is where um, we don't have enough mechanical engineers. I did say earlier that I made some more. I don't actually think I did then. I do it now because this is what I realized that I only have one or two and I probably should by now have at least five or six. Because even making this urgent so that you get the exclamation marks since it's a level 10, only one person can do it. So it still doesn't really speed it up much, does it? It just means they're not allowed to go through the toilet or anything. But what you actually want is to get multiple people on the task at hand to actually speed it up. Also, I keep getting this liquid on the floor. It's coming out of one of the chests. I've checked. None of them are turned on for liquid factables. So there should be no liquid. No pipes are breaking. I don't know where it keeps coming from. Now, I can fix it, and I will fix it in a bit by just putting a mesh tile down instead so that it just basically sits underneath where they're walking. Uh, but I honestly don't know where it's coming from, and it takes them a long time to clean it up. Still waiting for this to kick in. We need to send the goods over. There's a bit of an issue with setting the... What they call the uh, priorities to make sure that it sends the goods up to this room but then it's a high enough priority in that room that it doesn't try and send it back down with another sweeper. That's the difficulty having so many sweepers with such high range as well that they will fight each other if you're not careful. So you just need to make sure the settings are set. Basically, the way I'm doing it is the storage down below for polluted dirt is like two. Uh, and then these, these are set for eight. And then the actual feeder there on the right is set for nine. So it will go to that first. When that's full, it should then move over to the left there as it is doing and filling up that now. Now, they will only eat from that, that right-hand side. They won't eat out of the actual storage chests. But as that feeder runs out, it will move them over automatically. They are sealed to stop them from just off-gassing loads of uh, polluted oxygen into the room. And there is a fancy word for it that I cannot remember. But it also stops that from happening. Effectively, as it off-gasses, it loses its mass uh, and evaporates away. Uh, it's not evaporation, but it's something similar. Just down below there, you can see them murdering one of the smooth hatches because we're not allowed those anymore. They eat ore, and we don't want any ore being touched. And if they can't do anything for us, then what's the point of wasting the space in the ranch? You can see that liquid's moved over as well, by the way. I did that. That was boring, so the, I, I basically chucked in, I think, seven pumps. Uh, just in, anyhow, I could, and then did it, and then just delete it all. I've not wired them into the cleaning system yet. It's just an empty tank at the minute. There's the relic that we fetched, which is a coffee mug. Of course, it needs to go through one of the cleaners to actually show us a coffee mug. Else it will just stay as like that crusty black rock thing that looks like it's coated in that neodymium stuff that is the stuff at the bottom of the map. Working on the museum on the right hand side here, which is where the pedestals are and the plants that we're growing. So far we've got all four or five of the plants that we can get. There are a couple of other decor plants from other the asteroid that i've have sent well i think i've sent over so i'll try and get them planted now the first one being something about toes can't remember what it's called now but it's something toes there it is tranquil toes yeah and apparently it's uh basically looking at this flower is like having your feet rubbed i'm not sure what that means but that's what it says and then the pedestals are for any relics and artifacts that we collect throughout the game. Now, the robot head is one of them, but it's disappeared. So I'm going to try and get that back, but I'm not sure I know how to yet. Um, but every time you finish, like, the the hermit guy, again, that we're still waiting to complete, you get a toolbox from him, and that will be something that will be on there as well. So any relics that we get or any quest items that we get will go on these pedestals. Um, and I think... It's not the best way to do it. Remember, you should be putting these in actual rooms or in the recreation rooms. But I'm just doing it as like a museum, so it's fine. So, with some data disks in tow. And you get a lot of data disks from analysing the geysers and the slushy things, by the way. So, don't forget to do that. You get a good 10 to 20 for each one. 
so that is definitely what you should be doing now i'm looking at what i want to do next and i'm after the drill cone which is there now that is a second research before we get to that we have to use the interplanetary uh, goods transport beam thing which actually is very useful so that's what we're going to go for we're going to get the interplanetary transferer so we can send liquids goods gases through capsules through the depth of space to any planet that we arrive to or at without anybody having to be there and then when we do arrive there we'll already already have the resources waiting for us um and after that as soon as we get enough data banks of course currently at 32 so we're not gonna get that far but um we will then start researching the drill cone now that is my aim once i've researched the drill cone it's likely going to be the larger petroleum engine after that i honestly haven't a clue uh, the only rocket better than that is the cryo engine which is liquid hydrogen which i'm yet to even look at how i get hydrogen that cold we do have a decent amount of hydrogen uh, so in terms of the resource we have it in gas state but turning it into a liquid state is something that's gonna have to wait for a much further episode if the series gets there depending on your guys attention and wants needs and comments and just before i leave you project the next major project is this this is going to be a giant enormous electrolysis room it's got one purpose and that purpose is to turn a crap ton of water into a crap ton of oxygen all of this oxygen is going to be used for the base this is just for the base that's why it's so large i want the base to be forever stocked with oxygen with no issues the carbon dioxide will be ripped out those two little ones over there can be used for atmo suits and uh, rockets whatever else we need it for but this is going to be solely and only for supplying the base i'm hoping to get at least six pumps in here uh, five or six but i'd like six and then each pump will have its own area to pump into the base that way the base should remain very well stocked as long as we obviously don't run out of water which i can't see happening anytime soon for that to happen and for you to see it though you are going to have to see it in another episode because we are over time now anyway so thank you very much for watching if you like the video please click like any comments welcome as always to see the completion of this electrolysis room don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the episode again thank you for watching take care goodbye